It's hard to find a good cop in America, as these idiots keep on ruining their careers with their egos. Just like these cops who were taken to the cleaners by this auditor. All right, how about you? You're good. Cool. Can I help you with something? What was that? Can I help you with something? No, I'm good. What are you doing taking pictures of? What's that? So why are you taking pictures of stuff? I'm just taking pictures. Okay. What's your name, bud? What was that? Did I do something wrong or something? I'm just asking. You're taking pictures and stuff, so I'm just asking. Just taking pictures. Okay. And I'm just asking what your name is. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. So you gonna give me your name or? Well, I don't know why I have to. Did I do something wrong? I don't understand. Just suspicious of taking pictures and stuff, so I'm just asking. I don't. No, I don't understand, man. Am I in trouble or something? No. Yeah. If I didn't do anything wrong, you just said it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just asking for your name. You can say no if you don't want to give me your name. It's simple. Yeah, right? well, I, yeah, I mean, if I didn't do nothing wrong, I don't see why I have to give you my name. The deputy clearly had no understanding of the law and was being schooled by the auditor. Moments later, the deputy had no option but to leave the auditor alone as he had no answers to offer. Make sure you read all posted signs, okay? What do you mean all posted signs? Okay, start taking, start taking pictures of jail facilities and stuff like that, you can get in trouble for that. You can get in trouble for taking pictures of jail facilities? Yes. So, like I said, there's a bunch of signs I would read on five of you, okay, bud? Like this one? That's not a jail facility. Which one is? Read the signs, bud, all right? Well, I just want to make sure because I'm going to go take a picture of it right now. But do you want to? What's your name? Sergeant Juan Seja with the Yellow County Sheriff's Office. Sergeant what? Juan Seja. Juan Seja? That's correct. So, what's the issue? I don't understand why you came right, up just and. Just because you put a camera in my face isn't going to change anything, okay? I'm not saying it already, is. Already, I'm not saying it is. We've already finished our conversation. Are you doing I don't feel like I'm done. I'm just asking Listen, what the problem is. Bait, I'm not trying to bait you. I'm asking what the problem is. That you were taking pictures. But now you're and telling me. Now you're day day telling me. Though. Now you're telling me you can't take pictures of a jail facility. I I can absolutely take a picture of a jail facility. Okay. Make sure you read the signs, okay? No, you make sure you get back in your car and you're dismissed and get out of here. How about that? See you later. You're dismissed, babe. Yeah, see you later. The deputy left and the auditor started to go inside the facility. That's when he was interrupted by another officer who straight away started to intimidate him. You're not gonna like talk to me or anything like that? Well, I'm just taking pictures. Okay. Uh, I don't see. Any is reason there, why? Is there much more information to get? I'm just taking pictures. Okay, so just, I'm just asking any reason why. I mean, I'm not being a jerk or anything. Oh, I get it. And okay, I'm just so, saying I'm just taking pictures. But you're just taking pictures. Yep, that's it. Uh, is there but he, what's the reason why just taking pictures man. okay, it'd, okay? it'd be better taking if we pictures know of why. cars and license plates and yeah but what just because because but see that's the thing do you have an idea on you i do yeah. can i see it why do i have to show my do i have I'm not to show ask, my i'm asking if i can see it you're just asking if I can see yeah. it? Oh, if I don't have to show it, I'm not, I don't know so, how the law works on uh, that, but I'm not gonna show it if I don't have to. It seems like every officer in this facility had no respect for a citizen's constitutional rights. Despite the officer's attempts at intimidation, the auditor remained calm and countered their unlawful actions. This is private property. So this is private? You are, this, uh, you are. I didn't know that. It's open to the public for legitimate reasons. Okay, so technically at this point, just to let you know. Okay. All right. Once you go past that little area over there, okay. you are subject to search at no, for no reason whatsoever, just for being here. Mm. You probably don't want that to happen, do you? Not really. Exactly. No. You are required to identify yourself because we this is this is an actual government area. Okay. Okay. So what you should do if you don't want to be like talked to or search or anything like that is go stand at the corner because then you're not on my property. Because actually, as of right now, I can search you, and anything I find, I can't see. Is that if it's, right? If it's illegal, yes. Uh, um, yeah. I don't think that that's, I think that's uh, <laughs> probably not going to hold up in court, but yeah. <laughs> you can't just search somebody because yeah. they're on this property. Yes. Is this, a, this is private property, is that it? It is private, yet open to the public for legitimate business. The officer wasn't even aware that a sheriff's office constitutes a public building, and that the auditor had every right to film there. Publicly accessible property, like you said. I'm on public property. I'm not at the jail. M mind you. You paper. said this is a whole... No, it doesn't work, because anybody so, can come in here and not be at the okay, jail. This is the sheriff's office, right? 
Why do you have the right to ask me questions? Because you're a public and servant, and I'm a private citizen. So you can't answer my questions? I can, if I choose to. Okay, how about I choose not to, then? But you're a public servant. You get paid okay. to answer my questions. You get paid to serve me, and, and if, if you're here and you're talking to me and because harassing me, and harassing me like you are I'm right now. Harassing. But you are. I'm you're threatening to search me and that I can't be not, here, I'm and you you even said this is private property. I'm asking pictures. you why, and you won't tell me. I'm just taking pictures. That's the that's the telling you. Yeah, just taking, taking pictures. Taking I'm taking pictures, pictures to take pictures because I like cool shit, and I'm a photographer. I mean, what what is the what? Yeah, I could pictures, be working on a story that you don't need to know about. It, it could why, be a million yeah, okay. things that I don't have to but tell you because there's something do. called the Fifth Amendment, right? The corrupt cop had no answers for the auditor's claims, and that's when he proposed a hilarious situation to him, which further highlighted his lack of knowledge about the law. <laughs> I'm just taking pictures. If I was at your house taking pictures, would you want to know why? But you're not. I'm not. <laughs> but, I'm not at your house, question. though. I mean, I I've never even done this before. I was just out taking some pictures but today, and and I'm not at your house. If you were at my house, yes, I would come out and say, "Why are you taking pictures of my house?" Have the have the freaking president come out here on this property so you are subject to search if we choose to search you because we don't know you you are subject okay you're subject to search so i'm gonna go over and take a picture of the sign mr maritala what was that Are you mr maritala correct oh i see what's going on is that you i have a letter for you if it's you Slowly, the auditor was surrounded by law enforcement officers, and the initial deputy also arrived on the scene and attempted to do something cool, not knowing that he was about to be schooled by the auditor once again. Is that your uh, personal phone? Hey, is that your personal phone? Both of you guys. Personal phone or not? Company phone or personal phone? You have to answer. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because that's now a public record. And if I want to request it, I can. Is that your personal phone or company phone? Well, when you go to that, you can do that. No. Is that I need it for the record. Is that your personal phone or a company phone? Can you make that and what's your badge number? I don't need to provide that. You already have yes, you do. What's your badge number? You have to give me your name and badge number. I believe in your policy. It says your uh, identification has to show. Is there nobody else in this department named Seha? No. There's nobody else in this department with the last name Seha. That's no. what you're saying. <laughs> Davis, badge number? 15. What's your name and badge number? I'm not going to converse with you until I get everybody's identification here. So that's the bottom line. Name and badge number. Okay. What's your badge number? I don't need to provide you What's your badge number? You already have my name. Are you refu you're, So you're refusing to identify yourself? The deputy's ego was skyrocketing as he didn't even tell the auditor his name, which every public official is obliged to do so. It's concerning to see how these cops consider themselves above the law. Just then, the supervisor arrived and started confronting the auditor. Why is it that you're taking pictures? Are you just out I'm here taking pictures. For what? Taking for, pictures. Are you conducting an investigation or something? Taking or? pictures. But for what purpose, though? I'm taking pictures. So you don't want... You want us to help you, but you don't want to help us, the, right? And I've explained this it's to your be, officers. I, I haven't asked for now. your help at all. I, I'm at, you guys can go but back I, to work. But we're concerned <laughs> because we have secured people. Okay, so, so just make it clear. I'm not asking for your help. Okay. But if I ask a question, yeah, you're required to answer it because why? Do we know? Do you know that information? Why you're required to give your name and badge number and provide service to us? Do we know that? What can we help you with? But I'm just asking, do we what, know that what information? Can we help you with? It's because you're a public servant, right? And I can choose not to answer the questions. Why? Because I'm a private citizen, right? Shortly, it became apparent that the supervisor also lacked a profound understanding of the law. It was not understandable as to why these cops would fear public photography so much. I'm not but there would be you. gates. I'm not going to argue with you. There I'm would just, be gates. I'm, I'm giving you a lawful order to go to leave this area. Okay, if you want to go stand over there in the parking lot, you can. But there has to be a law backing it up. And if this is publicly accessible, I am totally allowed to do this. That's what I'm telling you. I'm not arguing with you. I'm not getting nasty with uh, you. What uh, I'm saying is, if this is like I've been told, like you've said, like you, the other you, officer said, this is publicly accessible. You, you, see that? you might not you see want that? me here. Hold on a second. You see that sign over there? There's a sign over there that tells you you can't. Yeah, juvenile detention facility. Could I drive back there and do that? If that's could what you're you doing, could you drive back? You, you could drive back okay there. publicly accessible. If I wanted to walk in here, am I able perfectly to walk in here? 
That's not the point. Publicly you know, accessible. Here, deputy police got the information. <laughs> Where'd you get that place. picture yeah. from? Right there. Where? There. Down there? I'm not past that. But, but you're on the grounds. Of Negative. Listen. I'm not past it. I am at the sheriff's <laughs> office. <laughs> how are you going to? You understand there's borderlines? Seeing the sergeant's shortcomings, the auditor also took him to a law lesson, ensuring to humble him. Shortly after, the sergeant realized that the auditor made sense and asked his fellow cops to leave him alone. Coming onto it, I would be trespassing, but not yeah. coming onto it is not breaking okay. a law. You see what I'm saying? So you can't give me, at that point, you can't give me a lawful order to not be here. Don't, well, do you understand that? I'm just trying to get you guys to open your mind a little bit and teach you a little different sure. than what they taught you in your training, okay. right? If it's not a law, there's literally nothing you can do. Nothing. Okay. Nothing any of you can do if it's not a law. Okay. So if it was a law and I was breaking a law, I'm a law-abiding citizen, I would absolutely move. But because you're giving me directives that I don't have to follow that aren't based on a law, a penal code, or some sort of violation, then I don't have to listen to you and you need to just accept that, suck it up, and move on. That's, that's it. Bottom line, right? So, at All this right. point, you guys are dismissed, babe. You're out of here. Yeah, See you guys day, later. Man. Yep. Uh, dismissed, fellas. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. The cops left the auditor alone, and he was allowed to film the building. He gathered content for his YouTube channel before he left. Well, if you think these cops got humbled, this next officer made such a blunder that he resigned immediately. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! On November 12, 2023, a couple of deputies from the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office were dispatched to a house after a woman claimed that her boyfriend had stolen her car and was threatening her. Soon, the officers reached her house and talked to the distressed woman. My car back. I've been asking all night. Can I get my car back? Like, I don't care about the argument. I don't care about... I don't even know what the argument is about. I just want my car. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with anything. I know any time we get into it, whether I'm right or wrong, I he puts his hands on me or he threatens to put his hands on me. It gets very violent. There he is. In your car or walking up? He's walking. As the officers were understanding the situation, the boyfriend of the woman arrived on the scene and was immediately apprehended by the cops. What are you patted down for? Because you're getting patted down. Why? Do you have any weapons on you? No, I don't have no weapons okay. on me. It's out right there. There's a key. Don't got no weapons on me. Hands on your pockets. What do you want to do? I want my car. Okay, I think it's at your mom's house is what he's saying. Can How did he get here if it's at my mom's um, house? I know. Can you call your mom to see if the car's there? Yeah. Okay. It's not at the house? Okay. It's not home. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I said you must go. You have my location, right? I'm on Green Acres. <laughs> yeah. 22-year-old Marquis Jackson claimed that the car was at the woman's mother's home. However, this soon came out as a lie, and the officers decided to arrest him for further investigation. Where's our car? Where's our car, Marquis? Can I talk to her? No. Can I, call, can I talk to her more? Mm-mm. Uh, her, her keys uh, are here. Okay, yeah, right. Hold on. Have you ever filled out an affidavit with us before? <laughs> no. Okay, so the suspect is going to be his information. This where it's the narrative. That's going to be what happened, the incident, okay? Marcus was searched before being placed in the back of the police cruiser. The officers started to gather information about the case. Screen. My screen. Right. You know, so it's like, why would you send me a picture of that? I'll show you again. If yeah. You tell me what that is. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Wait, I don't know what that piece is because that's not ordinarily there. All right. Does he have any anything on the firearm, like any aftermarket like a silencer? Mm-hmm. That's what that is. 
I couldn't even tell. We couldn't even tell, but more than likely it yeah, probably is a weapon. He's like, I'm gonna bust your whole shit up. Like, I'm gonna bust your windows. I'm gonna bust your radio, whatever. He's like, I'm gonna bust your whole shit. Like, okay. By the time you get to your car, it's gonna be over with. And I'm like, okay. At this point, I just, I don't wanna be done with it. I don't yeah. even wanna entertain it. Cause he is known for playing games. So it's like, I need to show you, like, I'm not playing. Right. I want my car, that's that. Like, how much I paid for my car? Yeah, or how much you think that it would value out right now. And so, okay. Okay. Where is it? 1656 Hunt Club, over here on MLK. Deputy Jesse decided to head back inside the car to ask Marquis some more questions. However, suddenly something unexpected happened and the entire situation escalated in seconds. The whole situation was bizarre, to say the least, as the officer claimed to have been by Marquis. He immediately opened the car and was quickly joined by the female cop. Both of them combined 22 the car, but surprisingly, Marquis was not hurt. I, I'm, I'm good, I feel weird, but I'm good. I'm good, I'm good. The officers never considered the fact that Marquise was searched from top to bottom and did not have a weapon. However, the ignorant cops kept on fighting the poor guy. I'm not. I don't know. I it felt like it. Jesse, move over to me. I got you. Move over to me. Jesse, what come back. Uh, uh, Mark, you right there. Dude, am I hit? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's get further back, further back, further back. Shockingly, it was later revealed that Deputy Jesse was never struck by a bullet. In fact, there was no gun fired, as Marquise remained inside the car with his hands cuffed behind his back. It was an acorn that fell on the roof of the car, which the cop mistook for gunfire. Have a look at the distressing incident from the female officer's body tan. It's okay.
At one point, even his girlfriend became worried about his condition as the cops kept on firing nonstop at the car. I'm going to get my pass. Okay, no. okay, okay. No! Get back! Get back! I'm not gonna tell you go! Get back! Get back! Get her! Get her and get her back now! No! The situation eventually calmed down, and Marquis was recovered from the car. Luckily, he had no serious injury. The police department immediately launched an internal investigation into the incident, and during the investigation, Deputy Jesse resigned from his position. However, this wasn't enough as Jesse went on to file a lawsuit against the officer and the city. This is what his lawyers had to say about the troubling incident. My name is Julia Casada. I'm an attorney with Burris, Niesenbaum, Curry, and Lacey. It is not acceptable that these officers, deputies, and their department is calling this a mistake. It is not okay to call it a mistake. There is no mistake. There was no mistake that Marquise was unarmed. There's no mistake that he had already been searched. There's no mistake that he was already handcuffed in the back of a patrol car when these deputies opened fire. And there's no mistake that the department hasn't released all of the footage or the information related to the shooting. This is not okay. The deputy that shot, that said that he heard an acorn or after the fact that that's a mistake, that's not acceptable. He resigned, that's not accountability. The other deputy that was exonerated, that is not accountability. There has been no accountability, there has been no transparency, and there has been no justice. And we demand that, we demand transparency, we demand accountability, and we demand justice, and we stand with Marquise with this. That is a question I wish that you would ask the law enforcement community. But I think the rush to judgment shown by the sergeant, uh, there were some allegations that were made at the time, uh, which turned out to be untrue. There was no real investigation by law enforcement except, well, we'll handcuff him and put him in the back. And then somehow, I don't know, maybe they thought you were Jason Bourne or somebody, Mark, he said that he escaped from handcuffs, pulled out a silenced weapon and started firing from inside the car. It sounds ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous, and I hope it sounds ridiculous to the public. Uh, so that's what we're here about. This cop was way out of line, but you'll be shocked to discover what this ignorant cop did next. Don't say that right now. I said don't say that right now, because uh, everything's being recorded right now. On August 14th, 2023, San Diego police officer Anthony Hare arrived at a crime scene to help his fellow officers arrest several people for suspected auto theft. As he arrived on the scene, he noticed a woman resisting the cops. Hey, just listen to him. Put your hands behind your back. Listen to him. However, the officers did manage to arrest her as they handcuffed her and proceeded to search her. After everything, Officer Hare was given the duty to escort her to the police station. Roll over first, yeah. Roll over. Yeah, hold on one second. Alright. You're gonna come with me to my car. So let's go. Oh, oh, who's that? You heard that my he said it. Let's go. How about asking me? Yeah. This way. Let's go. Walk across the street. 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 Walk across the street
I got your Sorry I got, for calling you that, but I got your duff, not your duffel bag with the doshing bag and all of that. Officer Hare proceeded to make her sit in the back of the police cruiser, and he was asked to take her to the police station and then drive her to the Las Colinas detention center. Surprisingly, something happened on the ride and the officer had a change of thought. Perfect. Just a little bit more. I don't want to pinch your skin. All right. Why are you asking that? What do you mean? I'm cool to you. The officer took her to the police station and was on the way to the detention center when the conversation between them started to get a little flirty. Well, you're not. I can't hear you now. Don't say that right now. No, I said don't say that right now because uh, everything's being recorded right now. What's going on? Just minutes before reaching the detention center, the officer entered a dark residential street and got into the back seat of the vehicle. He even turned off his body cam before coming back. However, he soon made a blunder and ended up closing the back door. He had to call a supervisor asking for him to bring his master key, claiming that he accidentally locked himself in. Moments later, a supervisor arrived and opened the door. The supervisor arrived an hour later, and all this time, Officer Hare was locked inside the vehicle with the woman. Ultimately, they arrived at the detention center, but things seemed to be looking pretty bad for the officer. After the arrest, the officers questioned both the officer and the woman who claimed that no activity had occurred. However, the woman did claim that the officer tried to get with her once she was done with the arrest. She also claimed that the officer wanted to meet her once she got out of jail. Some investigators also attempted to reenact what might have happened earlier. And then this is when I, I was shaking her, and then this is when I went in, but then I, I don't know if I had my hand like this, and then something like that happened, kicked it with my foot like that. And then, then I was in, and then that's, I was waking her up with this. I was 
Yeah, I was, I was, like, I was like, he was waking her up. While I was waking her up, I hear the door click behind me. Okay. Yeah. And then, so yeah, I was, I was like this. And then, when I found that the door was clicked behind me, I positioned myself like this. And I already knew that there was no door handle, but I was just like frantic. I was like, I can't get out of here. Okay. And then that's when she was, I, she was able to sit up here. And then I told her you stay there, blah, blah, blah. And then I was, I was just like hunkered down like this on okay. my side. The department did a test on Hare's clothes for semen and found traces on his belt. Soon after this incident, Hare resigned from the police department as he declined to participate in the subject officer interview that had been scheduled. Well, if you think this officer was dumb, the next one took things up a notch. On October 12, 2019, Corporal Jason Klingensmith from the Springfield Police Department decided to pull off a prank with one of his rookie officers. The video posted had no audio, but we'll lead you through it. As the corporal was standing with his fellows, he took off the taser from one of the officers and tried to prank a nearby officer. However, this wasn't enough as he soon went over to play the prank of a taser bomb on a rookie officer who had just been on the job for four months. Taser bomb refers to a prank which means throwing an active taser in someone's lap. Officer Fatih Mut Luturk panicked and tried to get out of his car and ended up badly injuring himself. The officers tried to help him, but it was in vain as he suffered a broken femur due to this reckless behavior. He continued to serve the department after the injury, but eventually changed departments in January of 2024. In June of 2020, Officer Fatsi went on to file a lawsuit against the corporal and the city. The officer complained that he had to undergo extensive rehabilitation treatments and suffered from severe pain for months. The officer was charged with battery and the lawsuit is still under proceeding, and we hope that he ends up paying for this stupid joke. This officer tried to act cool, but the next cop completely acted like a child and ended up losing his job. Where are you headed to, man? My mom's getting married this weekend. Look, man, my, my dad died in the line of duty, please. I'm having a rough night. On February 26, 2022, officers from the West Melbourne Police Department pulled over a car speeding at 80 miles per hour in a 45 miles per hour zone. The officer approached the driver and was shocked by his reaction. Hello. Yes, sir. How you doing? Good. So you got your firearm on you? Yep. Okay. Then don't you put your hands down. Good for sure. Yeah, well, you were going 80 miles per hour. Sorry about that. And I'm going to assume you've had a little bit too much to drink. Yep. 80 miles per hour on Minton Road and the speed limit is 45. Who do you work for? Orange County. Sorry, buddy. That's kind of unacceptable driving pattern. You're under the influence, I can tell already, and you're traveling 80 miles per hour. I'm sorry, man. Can I call a friend? No, man, that's not how that works. Go ahead and put your car in park. It is. 95, 94 unit. Don't, listen. You're gonna have my gun. Where are you headed to? Can I please have someone come pick me up? Where are you headed to, man? My mom's getting married this weekend. That doesn't really tell me where you're headed to. The driver was identified as Orange County Sheriff's Deputy Zachary Erickson. The deputy claimed that he had run away from his mother's wedding and soon went on a painful rant. Listen, put your hands behind your seat, Russ, man. I'm gonna take this gun off you. Yeah, I, 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 look, I don't, I, don't, I don't want it. You got any other firearms on you? Dude, Dude you're driving 90 miles per hour, man. What? My job is all I have. Please don't. Please. I'm having a rough night. You got your license on you, sir? I don't. It's in my room. Your license is in your room? Look, man, my, my dad died in the line of duty. Please. I'm having a rough night. Listen, man, you gotta pull yourself together, all right? You're, you gotta pull yourself look, together. Man, look, I swear, I'll have someone come pick me up, please. The deputy had a complete breakdown and he started to get incredibly defensive. The officer, however, would not be convinced by these tears as he proceeded to do his job. I, listen, I'm, <laughs> I'm having a rough night, okay? <laughs> my dad, look, listen, you can look at my badge, my, my ID. Right, that's 2011, man. Listen, man, I'm having a rough night, okay? Listen, this is no disrespect to your dad. I don't think you should disrespect him either by bringing this up. I you don't. understand? I'm having a rough night, okay? My mom's getting married to another guy. I don't know what to do, okay? Listen, you're an adult, all right? You're accountable for your actions. You are held at a completely entire different level 
Listen, right? I, I can't. You can just pull yourself together. Good. Where are you headed to? Anywhere but my mom's hotel. Because I don't know what to do. I'm sorry? Where are you headed to? I don't know. Where are you coming from? My mom's hotel. And I don't know where I'm going. You know where you're going. You got, you're going somewhere. It's on your phone's GPS. Ma'am, I don't know. Deputy Zachary's reason for fleeing while intoxicated was bizarre. Despite being a grown man, he couldn't accept the fact that his mother was getting married. I'm, I am so scared that my mom's getting married to a new guy. Dude, how old are you? Almost 30. You're almost 30 years old, and you want to blame your actions on the fact that your mom is choosing no, to move on in, with her life? No, ma'am. You could have hurt someone, man. You could seriously hurt someone. Ma'am, I, I, I can assure you that I am, I'm terrified. I, I don't, I don't know where to go, with my life. I don't. What do you do for employment? I'm a deputy sheriff, man. For my life, man. You're a deputy sheriff where? OPD, oh. or, or Orange County. I'm so scared to be. I'm so scared that. You'll stay since well. Yeah, thank you. Moments later, a senior officer arrived on the scene and started to interrogate the deputy. He even asked him to undergo some field sobriety test, to which he had a shocking reaction. Do you have any physical defects, disabilities that would prevent you from being able to walk a straight line or stand in one foot? No? Okay. Are you willing to do these exercises? No? If you refuse to perform the exercises, I'll have to make a decision as to whether you are safe to drive or not based on everything I've seen up to this point. Do you understand? Will you perform the exercises? If you refuse to submit to this test, your privilege to operate a motor vehicle will be suspended for a period of one year for a first or for 18 months if your driving privileges has been previously suspended as a result of a refusal to submit to such a test. Further, if your driving privilege has been previously suspended for a prior, prior refusal, to submit to a lawful test of your breath, urine, or blood, and you refuse the test, I am requesting of you now, you will, you will be committing a misdemeanor. Your refusal to submit to this test is admissible into evidence in any court proceedings. Do you understand what I've explained to you? Despite knowing that failure to complete the test might even end up raking his job, the deputy blatantly refused. This shows his commitment to law enforcement, and officers like these just don't deserve the badge. Shortly after, the officers proceeded to arrest him. Hey, Zachary, go ahead and stand up. Zachary, stand up, buddy. You're gonna arrest for DUI, okay? The same mom that you're upset with and you were trying to get so far away from? You have nothing sharp on you? Nothing? Yep. Can I call my mom? Yeah, one second. Can I call my mom? Yeah, I'm just gonna meet up with the, the van driver. And we'll do all that, okay? Please. Yep, just after the paperwork or the... Soon after getting arrested, Zachary started to plead with the officer to call his mom. The officer refused, and he kept on coming up with different requests. Please. Ash. Please, bro. Come on, man. Please, 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 bro. I gotta finish this first because it's more important. And then... I know, but these cuffs... Just stop moving, stop twisting them around. I'm not. I didn't put them that tight. You did. I put two fingers between the cup and your wrist. Do not. And it fit. Please. Open what? Open the door. Why would I do that? Can you please open the door? Why would I do that? Please. Come on, man. Please. Please. Can you help me out? Please open the door. I'm not going to open the door. Why? Can you help me out, please, bro? These cops are kill assist, so I'm not stalling the van driver when he comes. I know, but please, bro. No, no, no. That would be even better. Can you put it in the front now? Not right now. Please, bro. Look, man, I'm alone. I'm, I'm not trying to. Listen, man, come on. I'm alone. 
It's sad to see how Zachary acted after getting arrested. Despite knowing all the protocols, he kept on being difficult and even started to complain about health problems after some time. I had a bad burger for dinner, bro. Please, man. Come on. Please. Come on. Hey. I'm gonna... Come on, man. I don't want to throw up in your car. Come on. Hey. I'm gonna throw up, bro. I'm a bad burger for dinner, bro. You can't I'm do it by the window? I can't. That's why I put the window down. I can't. I have to go to the hospital. Chest pain. Chest pain. Can you listen? Make sure you throw up. Or if you have to. Huh? Do you have to throw up stuff? I have, I have chest pain. Yeah. Even after I loosen up your cuffs, you're gonna have chest pain. Yeah. Where does your chest hurt? You think it's just from drinking? I didn't. No. I loosen the cuffs, but I just want you to say My something. Chest hurts. Mean. Even if I loosen your cuffs, your chest. Yep. Hurts. Right, let's see if you feel better by the time they come. Turn around. My chest already hurts me. The officer returned to the back and loosened his cuffs. Despite this gesture, Zachary's sense of entitlement persisted, and he continued demanding that the officer open the door, even though it was clear that it wasn't going to happen. If you want, I'll throw up this hot dog in your car. I had a bad hot dog, bro. But it was a burger. It's a hot dog. It, it it's hot whatever dog. you want it to be. Can you just open the door, please, bro? Two, for two minutes. I opened it earlier. Can you open the door? But I opened it earlier, remember? Okay. I'll throw this hot dog up in your car. Can you... I, I'm, the I'm, window's I'm, down. Do you want me to... The window is down. Okay, so you want me to throw up in the car? The longer... Well, listen, man. The, the longer I take for this paperwork, the longer it's going to take for me to call your mom. You're not going to call my mom anyway. I will. That's no, no you won't. Deal. That's no big deal. I just like to finish. You won't. Business. You're not going to call her anyway. Can I you do. just roll the window? Can I you just that. open the door? Are you upset about your mom getting married? I don't. You don't like the guy she's married? Can I, can I be honest with you? I like the guy she's marrying. I just... You don't like your mom? No, I, I would die for my mom, bro. So why were you upset over that? I never expected my dad to die when I was 18. And... Seeing that you find a picture and your mom marrying someone else upset, it, it triggered you? My dad died in the line of duty, so I just... Sorry about that. Was he in the military or cop? The deputy sheriff. We're at Orange County, too? The officer had sympathy for Zachary's feelings, but that did not mean that he could act as he wished and drive while intoxicated. If this wasn't bad enough, the corrupt cop also started to demand some favors from the officer. Keep asking for favors. Keep distracting. Are you gonna call her? Sir? Is everybody in here gonna know the cop? I'm gonna give them the heads up just so they can separate you and do whatever they gotta do for their policy. Thank you. What kind of rifle is this? Saint. What? Saint. Saint? Mm-hmm. Saint what? Oh, they are fixing it. Interesting. Yeah, the department is. Does it hurt your back that far over to type? This officer turned out to be a loser, but the next cops took things up a notch. February 20th, a gas station employee contacted 911 complaining about a person who was acting inappropriately and causing a scene outside. Hey, can you hear me? Um, yeah, you're going in and out. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm a worker down here at Delta's BP gas station. Okay. Uh, I have a guy up here, and he's drunker than mofo, uh, bugging my customers. And we had some kids out here. He went and bugged them, and they took all out. But he's still here. He's out front of my store. Okay, do you have a description of him? Uh, yeah, he's a white dude, got short hair, he's wearing a black short shirt with, uh, like, uh, Bart Simpson on the front of it. Soon, an Ohio police officer went over to the gas station where he encountered the person standing outside the store. He quickly went over to confront him about what the employee said earlier. Come here a second. What's going on tonight? I was going back to my hotel. Okay. Down here for some more alcohol tonight? Yeah. Okay. You got an ID on you, man? Yes, sir. Yeah, you're going gonna to set that down somewhere. Yes, sir. You got a call on you early here. You were causing a disturbance? No, sir. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. Looks like he had to close the store for you and everything, man. He didn't want you coming back in there. Yeah, no, I was just walking back a lot. Okay. Get, let's, let's see your ID, yeah, man. Yes, sir. 
The person was identified as Bud Swayze, who was an Ohio native and had come to the town of Chillicothe to have dinner with his friends. He was staying at a hotel near the gas station and seemed to cooperate with the officer. Where are you from? Uh, Southern Ohio. Okay. Drink some alcohol tonight? Yeah, I was just walking back. How much you had to drink? Back how the, much have you had to drink? I am a drove I haven't drank that. Didn't ask you that. I asked you how much you had to drink. Oh, uh, one white ball. Okay. So what was the what happened when you were here earlier, man? There's some kids out here in the parking lot, you were vaping in the store. What was going on with that? You just in a having a bad night or what's going on? Because like I said, we got a call on you earlier, okay? And you'd already you'd already left. I apologize for what I said. Who are you here with? No, I'm just here by myself. Buddy. Shortly after multiple units arrived and Swayze was surrounded by the cops, it appeared as if he was detained without any reasonable articulable suspicion as the officers kept on questioning him. Back home hotel, yeah. What brings you into town? Anything in particular? Mm-hmm. Just trying to find out what your story is, man. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I'm cool. It's not a trick question. No, we're, no, we're cool. Um, so, if you want to talk about it, um, a lot of the Israelis, um, what is Assad, I don't know if you guys know about Palestine and stuff like that, there's a lot, there's a lot of foreign entities in your town. I know you guys uh, busted the old massage parlor down there. You thought like a couple girls gave them a little rub and tug for 60 fucking bucks. What was a big fucking bust? What are you? Like, you have to tell us you're some sort of like white supremacist or some shit like no, that. No, I don't know. Why are we talking about different ethnicities in this town? The guy was definitely drunk and should have been just escorted back to his hotel. However, the cops kept asking useless questions to him and were even getting offended by his opinions. They kept talking on but never talked about any crime that he might have committed and just quickly apprehended him. I was like, hey, I'm in town. Hey, uh, where's a good restaurant? They told me Applebee's. Okay. Well, B-Dub. I'm interested in your line of thought on, you said, yeah. talking about Palestine and Israelis. What well, finish yeah. your thought. I'm, I'm genuinely curious at this point. Well, I'm just saying. How does that tie into you being in Chillicothe? Yeah, I'm just walking on the street. I, I appreciate you guys talking to me. I really do. You got any weapons on you or anything, man? No, sir. Right. No, Place sir. your hands on the front of that vehicle. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, we're okay. Let's go patch it down for weapons, okay? No weapons, right? No knives, guns, bazookas? No. You have anything in your pockets at all, consider it illegal. No. The officer had no reason to make this arrest, but he proceeded with it without even telling him what crime he was being arrested for. Careful check, man. Get anything in your pockets. You're, you did a safety check. Okay. All right. Relax. Sure. You relax. I want to check your eyes real quick, okay? Yes, sir. Just relax. Turn toward the man a little bit. Just want you to follow this pen with your eyes, okay? Uh, we're, not, we're not doing a public right. intox, so. You don't want to do the test? Alright, turn around and put your hands behind your back. For real? Yeah, you're under arrest. Damn. So we're going to talk about intoxication. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we just told you that we're not doing the public intox. Looks like we are tonight. Relax your hand, man. To put together like you're praying there. You're you good. You're, you're good. You want to or... Yeah, better. Where's your other one? Do you have two on you? No, that's fine. I'll get back to you. You're fine. First thing is. I was walking back to my hotel, man. Yeah, you've told us that a couple times now, man. You just had too much to drink tonight. Just going to the drunk tank right out. You're a little, you're a little bit of uh, peanut butter jelly as the president of all this. It's shocking to see how the cops made an arrest based solely on what they heard from a 911 call. This is a blatant violation of the guy's Fourth Amendment rights, who had committed no crime and had no arrest warrant against him. This is change and okay, man. Maybe like 20 bucks, bro. Right. So you, no one's back in your hotel? Take possession of you. You're by yourself. 
It's weird. The block is hot, bro. What do you mean, what do you mean by that? It's just like, I didn't even do anything. Well, we got called to you because of your conduct inside of BP earlier. Apparently, you were some sort of verbal altercation. We weren't looking for you. Because you weren't here anymore when we got you, and now you're trying to come back. And they're starting to no, do that they're locking, the, they're locking the doors on you. Yes, sir. And we're talking to you, and it's hard to keep you on one train of thought. The cops kept searching him thoroughly before they went over and put him in the back of the police cruiser. He, he was wanting one of us to go in. You got his ID? I'll get with you. Where's, where are we going, sir? Right here. In case he starts like, blowing trouble. You feeling okay? You're not going to puke or anything? No, I'm good. Bro. All right. Appreciate your cooperation with everything, man. No, thank you. Just gonna be a ticket, alright? I'm on a misdemeanor citation. Have a seat. Oh, shit, it's gonna be hard on my fucking legs. Only after arresting him and putting him in the back of their car did the cops decide to go into the store and talk to the person who called earlier. He tried to pay for some chips and stuff with some of his. Yeah, items. I forgot to tell you that. I seen you guys pull money out of his pocket and it was like, oh, he also tried to pay me with that. I forgot. But okay. Huh. It, this is technically his bag of chips. Does he owe you anything? No, he does not owe so me anything. He actually anybody. gave you actual U.S. currency. He actually gave me U.S. currency. He actually paid uh, the first transaction with the Bengals. Uh, and he can't take us into jail. So. Uh, if you guys want free snack, Merry Christmas yeah, to you. Do whatever you want. But other than that, it was the second one giving us the customers that was coming up here. Like, what's your name, man? Dakota Seymour. Common spelling Dakota Seymour, S E Y M O U R. I appreciate it. Like I said, I'm a laid back employee, man. I don't, I don't beat for nobody, but as soon as I see him run out for kids, it was like you guys were just, it was a group of kids, you know what I mean? I just need a good deal. Dakota was a coward for calling the cops for absolutely nothing, and he had also stolen his foreign currency earlier. Shortly after, the cops took Swayze to the police station where he stayed in detention for eight hours before being let go. He was charged with disorderly conduct by intoxication. However, as he had not committed these crimes, the state decided to dismiss them after some time. As of now, Bud Swayze wants to sue the officers in the city and would be filing a lawsuit soon. Well, these cops were insane, but the next deputy took things up a notch. You said or something that you did, she felt was aggressive. So, wow, guys. Yes, Holy crap. Look. Hang up. Hang up. What's up, guys? In April 2024, First Amendment Auditor Jason decided to conduct a First Amendment audit of the Lono County Courthouse. As he entered the building, he encountered first resistance from the deputy. Hello. I was just reading your signs real quick. Um, I was just coming, I'm working on a story. I was just coming in to work on my story here in the building. I don't need to go in the courtroom. What's that? Don't record me. Do you work for the public? Who do you work for, man? I work for the sheriff's office. Okay, then I can record you. It's actually my First Amendment right to do that. If you work for the government, I'm allowed to record anyone that works for the government in their course of duty. Anything you have in your pockets goes in the bucket? Sure. I'm not here to start anything with anybody. I just wanted you to know that. Can I get your name, please? Deputy Mabels. Mabels? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I'm Justin. However, Jason schooled her and proceeded to continue ahead inside the building. He calmly recorded for a few minutes before getting inside a publicly accessible room. The camera and people don't like that, and so sometimes it turns into that. <laughs> I was checking that out when I first got here. It's a three inch rifle, they were calling it. Yeah, they've got the rods out there in the glass cases. Oh, that for they real? They used to stuff the cannonballs in it. You want to get here? Yeah, those oh, I didn't know that's what that they was. Go to the and eat her. Oh, cool. Thank you. What the hell? Did y'all shut the door on me? Talk about me? No. Why you shut the door on me then? It wasn't on you. We just sometimes close the door like when court's going on and we're having okay. conversations. So you don't care if I'm filming, but as soon as I leave, you're gonna no. shut. You're gonna shut the door on me. No. Oh, I can ask you. I'm not saying you can. I'm just asking you. No. It was a question. 
Well, you're like, hey, go check out this, and then the door shuts. Oh, no, I was just talking to her. Hey, go outside and look at that, and then the door shuts. As Justin got away, one of the women closed the door on him. Justin felt this action was highly inappropriate and asked some explanation from them. However, the public officials considered themselves too entitled and called for the deputy to take him away. Why the, what were you saying that you wanted the door shut for? I was talking to her about stuff that actually is confidential about our job and we don't want people that are in the hallway for what was the subject i don't have to tell you that you okay know, it's because you know no, it's because that's what I it was the door because we right. are allowed to do that in our i'm not office. saying you aren't i was just but asking you're welcome to film here like i don't have any problem with that business. i don't even want to bother y'all anymore i was just kind of like well, that was weird the door got shut on me okay. excuse me right. oh no I'm not combative. I was laughing. You got. I, when was I being combative? When was I being combative? The deputy who had already had an unpleasant encounter with the auditor was only looking for an excuse from these officials to escalate the situation. And that's what she did. Well, you can't do that. If you lock it, then you need to lock it for everyone. Here, just so you guys know, and I'm not trying to—I'm not trying to be mean, but if you shut that for me, you gotta shut it for everybody. You can't just pick and choose me. You can't pick and choose me. It's—it's it's everyone or no one. It's everyone or no one. This camera has nothing to do with it. She just asked you nicely to move on. And I don't have to, but I really was. But I don't like being told what to do, either. I was literally walking away. Okay. Well, something that you said or something that you did she felt was aggressive so it well i have a doll on camera thankfully thankfully to ask you to move on no, you actually if don't they feel that way you don't though so law yeah because trumps my job feelings. is to secure them but you from the public but you no it's not yes it is i promise you it's not so your job is that is what i said to follow the law eight and a half your job is to follow the law and their feelings don't trump the law However, the deputy was not able to contain him as Jason kept on speaking the truth. Soon after, another official arrived and started to make matters worse for the auditor. So go. I'm not going with you. I'm going the opposite way you go. So whatever way you go, I'll go the opposite. How about that? I don't like being told what to do for no reason. I shut the door because we're trying to have court down there and you are being really loud. So I need y'all to move. I'm going down the road. Please. Uh, you can't Thank you. All right. I'll, I'm not going to interrupt anything. I'm not going to argue with you. All right, I'm not going to argue with you either, sir. Can I get your name real quick, please? No, sir. Uh, do you work for the public? I do not. You don't? I do not. Well, then where do you have business telling anyone what to do? Because I'm in charge of this courtroom. So you don't have any business telling me here. what to do? No. Go on. If you don't work for the public, I don't want to hear from you, sir. Justin knew the laws and he was well within his rights to be in a public building. He refused to listen to the tyrant who kept waffling about something. Are you just a normal citizen or do you work for the public? I don't work for anybody but the Judge Parker and you're interrupting my court. I'm not interrupting anything. Just go. I, hey, if you quit talking to me, I'll quit talking to you and then there's no sound. So what am I, what am I, what am I interrupting? You just want to argue with somebody, so just go. I'd, I'd rather you just left me alone, honestly. Well, you started it, go. No, I didn't. Y'all started it. I'm on my own business asking questions about the building. I'm trying to learn a little bit more about this building and Lone Oak, and that's all I've been doing this entire time, and I have it all on video. Okay. So yeah. you guys are starting stuff with me Goodbye. because I have a camera. Actually, keep it down because we're out trying to have court. And I'll agree to that. Okay. Yes, Thank sir. You. So if you have that badge on, it says you work for Lone Oak County, so you do work for the public, so you do need to tell me your name. Yes. What's his name? My name's Bobby. I'm going to find it one way or another. Please Bobby. just tell me your last name and what your position is here. Otherwise, I'm you have no business. All right. And what's your last name, sir? McMillian. Thank you. Thank you. The official also came to the realization that he wouldn't be able to intimidate Justin. Therefore, he left. Shortly after, as Justin was just calmly recording some stuff, he realized that the deputy had done something incredibly shocking. Is that you? What's going on? That's not telling me anything. I got a call from Lake Sam Stairs about a bad person in the air. Oh, combat. So the fire truck? I asked him to leave. I was trying. 
Oh. Oh, weird. Well, there's two. She told two lies right off the bat, and I have it all on film. But I'm not being combative with anyone. I've been extremely polite. All I've done is ask questions about the building and about Lone Oak, trying to find out more about the history. And I have it all on film from the from the very second I got here. So this all started when I was actually just talking to some ladies down here in this back office. And they were being cool. They're like, oh, you can film. Check this out. Check that out. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, hey, check that out in the hallway. So I go check it out in the hallway, and the door slams behind me. But it didn't shut. It kind of slammed and it came back open. So I was just like, what? The ignorant deputy had gone over to press the panic button that alerts both the sheriff's office and the police department about a serious situation. Shortly after, both the sheriff and the police chief arrived at the location. And even they found the reason for their arrival pretty hilarious. You gotta understand we got a, a heightened sense of no, alert good. when somebody presses a, a They shouldn't have done button. that. The sheriff's office comes. Wow. Yeah. Wow guys. The sheriff's office comes. Holy the crap. Look. Hangs out. Hangs out. What's up guys? Hey. It's just me. Hey. How are you? Hey, no, I'm, this is, this I'm is, cool, man. This is Sheriff Staley. Hey, I'm Justin dude. Yeah, what's up? I didn't know you the wanna, I, don't know the I don't mind talking to him again. I'll tell him what happened again. Fine. What's up, Sheriff? What's up, <laughs> I thought someone was hurt or something. I didn't know this was over this me. Is, this is Sheriff John Staley. I'm Chief Matt Edwards, the one police. Yes, department. sir. How's it going? Hey, everybody we'll get an alert. Hey, everybody go tonight. Wow. Y'all go? Yeah. Chef said go tonight. Wow, guys. Chef said go tonight. Come on. Come on. What's up? What's up, brother? Well, I think down there might be the person that this is over, so I don't want to go down there if they're scared of me or something. So, yeah, yeah. So I have everything on film <laughs> since the minute I got here. I'm just checking out. I'm learning about the history of Lone Oak, about the courthouse. I've been extremely polite with everyone, just like I am right now. Asking questions. When, when was the building built? Blah, blah, sure. blah. You're good, but when they push an arm, we don't know what it is. We don't know oh. like the 911 call. No, you guys did what you were supposed to do. Yeah. It's a, it's a hey, come on. Right, yeah. Come back. I thought someone was hurt. I was trying to get out of the way. I didn't know it was me. <laughs> I was uh, like, what the heck? Uh, if you want to look... Hey Danny, can we turn my lights off? Yes, sir. The panic button is reserved for severe emergencies, and the deputy surely wasted taxpayers' money by calling these law enforcement officers over for absolutely nothing. It was time that the corrupt deputy needed some law lesson. Now, whenever they push a button, we're all going to come because we don't know what it is. It's not like a, a call that says, hey. Right. But this is what we've got. If that was a call. Up imagine hitting the merge imagine hitting hitting that button knowing what's going to happen over me well we're gonna over me i'll put together well next time you're gonna be like is this a real emergency or is it a guy with a camera well what i'll do is put it you know, with all the elected officials and i'll go over with them exactly what this is <laughs> yeah you know what I mean? so, so. well i mean even if they even if you didn't know what this was it's a guy with a camera right. it's, it's a guy with a phone in his hand on a stick I agree. <laughs> we agree yeah. um but yeah, yeah, of course, you know, there's no trouble here. We're just uh, cool. We're coming to the exactly, sure exactly when I came in and they said they pointed to you, and I'm like, okay, that, What's going that's on? That's when I was like, Oh, I see I was what's like, happening. Let's just Dean's going try to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll let you guys get back to it. Justin, Justin. John Staley. Nice meeting you, meet John. You need something, you let us know. Appreciate and, uh, you guys. Come visit. What I'll do for you guys are sheriff's office, right? He's a police chief. You're, you're the police the chief. Office, yes. Okay. City police department. And you're the sheriff. I'm sure. Gotcha. I was thinking you were you were the deputy chief when you said that. No. So you're the police chief. I'm the police chief. Gotcha. What I will do, and I guess it's neat needs to be done, is I'll go through with all the elected officials and try to set up a, a time to say, hey guys, let's go over the Second Amendment, yeah. the First Amendment, and what the difference is between right the first coming and doing this, because you can really. A lot of guys that do this also carry fire. I mean, they'll wear full masks and like they'll be scary. Right, right, right. <laughs> Jason kept talking to both the officers as they calmly listened to him and agreed with him on everything. Finally, it feels good to know some people still care about the law. After talking to them, Jason had to go to the deputy to have a word. They're probably going to come talk to y'all and make sure you understand when to and not to hit the emergency button because that was not that was not a good thing to do. They're kind of upset about that. Was that you that hit it? They said it got hit from up here, Miss Mabel. How come you hit it? You know, next time they're not—they're gonna wonder if it's a real emergency or not. So, you know, the whole 
The boy who called Worf, ugh, the boy who called Wolf story. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. Today, we witnessed some of the most ignorant police officers on duty. It's incredibly concerning to think that these officers create issues for the public while believing they are exempt from the law. Police departments need to ensure that officers undergo comprehensive legal training to prevent harm to innocent citizens. If you agree with me, please consider showing your support by liking this video and make sure to subscribe to stay informed about future cases like these. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the next video here.